How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Another episode of NAI ESP. We got some NAI softball to talk. Carly Fitzer. Yes, we do. What's up, brother? What's up, brother? <laughs> it's those sketch. If you don't know sketch at this point, it, it with someone, I, some, somebody that that, that I, I've been talking, been about, been saying what's up, brother, for a few months now. Uh, Carly's uh, been saying it too, but it's like you know, something like we weren't really sure it should come on the podcast, like something we talk about, but. <laughs> All right, so everybody's talking about it. Um, and then now we have Indiana Wesley and uh hosting What's Up, Brother. We have fire video, by the way. Amazing video. Madonna uh do, Madonna posting m- posting about it, seeing it. So we're like, all right, whatever. Uh sketch is hilarious. He's taking over the sports world. It's just it just goes to show, ladies and gentlemen, like that, something can go viral. And that's kind of why we live on the internet. Uh speaking of viral, how about Kayla Mick, another banger? Another banger on TikTok. Million views, uh, I think. Is that what we're up to? Uh, I, when I checked earlier, it was at 900-something. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Kung Fu thing. I did not think that one was going. All right, so it's still right there around 900, but still. That's really it's, good numbers. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, Kayla Mitt killing on the TikTok Forest. I saw uh, Oregon Tech tweet something out. She's like 20 hits away from breaking the all-time cascade. Hey, Bunker. <laughs> you see Bunker uh, Carly's golden doodle making his appearance. He is. Oh, sir. He's got a little energy right now. Rue is focused in on some chicken that just came out of the air fryer, so she is not studying any NAI softball talk today, but at least we got Mr. Bunker's attention. Just, his, yeah. just his eyes. Just his eyes. He's cute. See, this is why you need to go subscribe to the YouTube. Subscribe to the YouTube. Uh, selfish plug time. Subscribe to the YouTube. I podcast, Spotify. Subscribe. Follow. Give us five stars. Leave a review. Uh, tell tell your parents. Tell your your players. Tell your assistant coaches. So whoever. Tell your administration. Tell whoever. Whatever. Subscribe to the YouTube. Best way for us to grow. Best way. And hey, if we grow. That grows the game of NAI softball. Come on now. Uh, we have got a great, great interview. NAI softball legend, I would say. Um, and Coach yeah. Jay Kant, 600 wins, 23-year uh, career. He's in his final season uh, with Braves. So we get to have him on, talk about his career, talk about some Braves softball, KCAC softball. Great, great interview. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about, about games midweek, a um, couple of upsets. Uh, then a brief weekend preview, not a earth shattering weekend where it's like we got we got marquee matchups up now, but still some good ones, some underrated ones. We're going to point out maybe some more upsets um, in there. But Carly, you went yeah. golfing this week, yeah? I did, yeah. I went. Are, 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 how how are we swinging? It's Masters week. Let's talk. Let's talk golf. I'm I'm not gonna lie. I usually don't swing my driver because I can't be consistent. Normally, right. I top the heck out of it. Um. It's back in play. It's back in play. Driver is back in play. I was smacking balls around. Was it a, was it just like a spur of the moment thing? Or is it like, all right, am I do, do something, do this and click? Um, I don't, I think it was just spur of the moment. I haven't swung it. I probably swung it last summer, like two or three times. So I think, I think it just came out of the woods, came mm-hmm. out of nowhere. Well, speaking of Woods, Tiger Woods is one under through 13. Uh, now, of course, we are. it's not a coincidence. We're recording this at about 8.20 Eastern time because that's when the Masters uh, sounded their horn. And we we're like, all right, we're going to hop on now. Uh, we wa- I was watching the Masters, uh, of course. Wa- watched some NASL football again. Uh, found out MOBAP and uh, CMU, that game canceled. Unfortunate, so didn't get to watch that today. So I was like, oh, no, more time for the Masters. Um, uh, got to watch that. Uh you know, big Brooks Kepka fan. Did, all right. I'm not the biggest Bryson DeChambeau fan, but good stuff. Uh, had, a good day. had a good day. Scotty Scheffler, great day. He's Scotty. Had a little, little chip in um, on, I think maybe thir- 12 or 13 from the from the bunker. Tigers one under. Uh, had a had a tough bogey early on, but a couple birdies has got him one under. And look, if all he's got to do is be in the hunt, Tigers just got to be in the hunt. And by the way, the new. The Tiger brand, the new merch on Tiger brand, phenomenal. Yeah, you think he'll still do Sunday Red? Oh, he's got to do Sunday Red, right? You he's got to do Sunday Red. If he doesn't, if he doesn't do Sunday Red, I'm not going to feel good about my chance of Tiger winning. If he's wearing red on Sunday, he's in the cut, he's in the mix, he's in the hunt. I like my chance, Tiger Woods. And I, you know, I get he's a big underdog, but anything can happen. Just like anything can happen in the world of NAI softball. 
Carly, mm -hmm. where we had the Grace Lancers take one again from the Marion Knights, two and two against Marion. Grace, the, the Grace Lancers are. They're four and twelve against the rest of the Crossroads, which I think is kind of a funny representation of the Crossroads League because it. So. Yeah, I mean, th this conference is going to be an absolute doozy down the stretch, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun in the in the, in their conference tournament. Uh, I think they're, that's going to be a conference where there's certainly going to be upsets because we've seen it now with Marion dropping a couple uh, two teams not right there at the top of the conference, um, and they've dropped like this one to Grace. Game one, six to four. Uh, the Grace Lan Lancers uh, won that one. Abby Madre of Marion had a RBI knock in the second, uh, or excuse me, her second RBI knock, had one earlier in the game, but her second RBI knock uh, tied the game at three in the bottom of the seventh. And then in the eighth inning, Bree Gardiner had a sack fly in the eighth to make it 4-3. The big knock was Chloe Huff's two RBI single to make it 6-3. to three. Savannah Harger, the shortstop for Marion, would get one back on the Lancers, but that would be it. They would take it 6-4. Then Marion would answer right back six to four it looked like we were going to have a very serious sweep with grace jumping out for nothing but then marion was like hey we got to get one here at the very least like we cannot lose two home games as a top 10 team to a team above 500 so they were able to score five in the fifth a uh, big one was a three-run shot from grace meyer but man marion a team that's gotten into crossroads play we talked about uh in the preseason we talked about before the season started and it's coming to life now carly this is going to be the probably the deepest conference in AI softball this year. I, I said it. I, I stamp. I had my stamp of approval on it after I saw Goshen, after I saw Huntington um, it, down here, and now we have a team like Grace now taking two games from number number seven team in the country. Saw it also. Uh, Indiana Wesleyan a couple losses. Huntington uh, took one. St. Francis of Indiana took one. Man, this conference, Carly, is this going to be the most chaotic conference? Because I know last episode we said we were going to do the 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 kind of the conference where everybody's standing right now, but I thought two things. One, we haven't interviewed this episode to Coach Kent, so I already want to, want to have that kind of be the highlight of, of today's episode. And also, let's just get through a weekend, and let's kind of let weekend games play and then come out next week. We'll talk about uh, where everybody's shaping up, then what's kind of two weeks uh, left to go in, in conference play. But without a doubt, this is going to be a conference we're going to be talking about ne uh, next week, Carly, because once again, anything can happen i think in this conference when it comes to their uh, time for a conference tournament there and i i love that i love a good old spicy uh conference tournament where you don't know what's going to happen anyone can go out and take it but yeah, yeah i think i think crossroads is they're sitting up there on the list of going to be a wild conference tournament is bunker okay um he went through a short little phase of biting me and grabbing onto my sweater but he has resorted back to his bone so we're good okay we're good sorry we're good. if there was distractions if you're no, watching I, 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 I saw it i was like i was gonna look at the notes real quick as bunker's making me laugh but good <laughs> all right no sorry i tried to ignore him but well let's go to a conference where we have a pretty good understanding of what's going to happen over the next couple of weeks uh, especially after what your midland warriors did taking to from Morningside, it looks like just continue on of the collision here in a couple of weeks between your your team, your former your, your alma mater, and the team they always meet. It seems like the Northwestern Red Raiders. But let's talk about Midland. Two big wins against Morningside. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wasn't I wasn't too sure um, how these would go. We've always, that's always been more of our uh, biggest rivalry. No matter what records show for each team, it's always a battle. Um, but Midland takes two. I'm going to start off with the hot and heavy note, Aaliyah Rincon, perfect game, um, 5Ks, not, yeah, dog, perfect game against Midland, or not against Midland, against Morningside, um, Reese Floro, two for three, Camille Vestal, one for three, um, she actually earned the only earned RBI in that game, and Ariana Crafton, two for three with two runs. Game tell me two, a little bit more about home. Tell me a little more about Crafton. I keep seeing her name pop up with, with, with Midland. She's having a pretty strong year. What, what what can you tell us about her? Yeah, uh, she's a little nine hole hitter. Not much. Uh, she's all she's really skinny. Not much. Uh, not much meat to her. Um, very fast. She's got a lot of speed. Little slapper just finds a way to find a hole. A um, little bit like Emily Pry. She just finds a way on. 
Love yeah. it. And you got, and you, you know, you, that's all y'all need in y'all's lineup because you have names like Ronnie Foot, who's, you know, you, you know, the career that she's had, season she's having at, at Midland again. Um, and she proved why she's going to go down as a Midland Warrior legend again in game two. Yeah. Uh, Ronnie Foot gets the walk off in the bottom of the seventh. Emily Pry got on base. Uh, Reese Flora walked. Ronnie knocked him in with an RBI to, uh, to right field. Um, Emily Pry was two for four. She had two runs. Ronnie Foot, three for four, double RBI. Reese Floro, one for three, um, two RBIs under her belt. Peyton Kohler goes four and a third, um, was doing pretty well. Rincon came in to kind of close things up, and she gets the W. She allowed one hit and four strikeouts. That one hit was her first hit allowed in, I think, 27 batters faced. Jeez. Something like that. Midland, they lost the element of surprise after the run y'all went on last year and it's great to see them being able to stick with it. We've seen teams, you know, have that success of postseason and then kind of fizzle out uh, the next yeah. year. Credit to Co uh, Coach Beth and everybody uh, there. We, we had a little bit of an interesting obstruction runner interference kind of situation I saw there. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be honest. I didn't, I, I, I didn't think that was obstruction or runners interference. And I thought it no. was kind of called pretty well by the umpire. Yeah. And Maddie Ryling handled it really well um, with the tweet that she put out. But I didn't see that. Yeah, it was it was a really good tweet. Her just kind of explaining it. Um, no animosity towards the other player, but yeah, I mean, it, I, it, I didn't see obstruction either. I mean, it would have been a very hard, tough play to make, and I think that's what kept the ump from ultimately calling it. Yeah, and like it won the game, so. Ultimately, didn't really make it. You, hey, you got to walk off to watch, so can't really complain too much. Yeah, about he doesn't that. love a walk off. Well, speaking of controversial plays and walk offs, let's head over <laughs> to Evangel and Avila. So, 3 2 win in game one for the Valor Eagles of Avila had a 2 0 lead going into the seventh. Valor would load up the bases, and then Phoebe Gardner cleared the bases, scoring three. Um, I've heard Va Valor fans say it was fair. I've heard Eagles fans say it was foul. Um, so, I'm not. The umpire called it fair, so it was a fair ball, and Evangel won the game three to two. Um, I'm gonna go go with that. I'm gonna go with that. It was a great game, and for Avila, that's a tough one. They needed a win. They needed a win. They needed a KCAC win. Um, now look, no, what last year they were five seed and, and made made the KCAC. Obviously, that's not the path you want to go with every year. Um, tough one for, for Avila, especially being up uh, two nothing, need three outs. That's always going to be a tough way to lose a ball game. Uh, in game two, very similar. They would jump out to nothing. Uh, second inning, uh, Holly Campbell. Homer made it to nothing. Um, and then Gardner's fourth RBI of the day. She had the big three, the walk off um, with the bases loaded in game one. Uh, she made it uh, two to one with an RBI knock. And then Valor would tie it up in the third with a Carly Romans RBI, uh, made it three to three. And then it was Annalise. Um, Lever finds two RBI knock, making it four to two. They would get one back, uh, but that was enough. Uh, the Eagles would get one back, but four runs, that was enough for Diggs and Bentley to combine for the second win of the day. And look, Evangel, they were a solid team in the heart of America last year, and they've come into the KCAC, and they've been one of the top teams, and they have arguably the best pitching uh, with some of the uh, names that I just mentioned in the KCAC. And to be honest, I think that uh, we're going to talk more about the KCAC overall. Uh, good Lord, how many times can I say that that, that conference acronym here? But um, we're going to talk more <laughs> about more about the Kansas, the Kansas Collegiate Athletic Conference uh, on Monday because it's definitely going, going to be a race for that top seed. And we're going to talk to a coach who's in, in that hunt and Jay Kent here in just a little bit. Yes, sir. Uh, what's up? I was just going to say kind of segue into the next one. One we feel like we know who's going to win the regular season in this one. But once again, we find out anything can happen in the world of NAI softball with Reinhardt and Tennessee Wesleyan. Yeah. Tennessee Wesleyan put up a great fight um, in both games. I mean, they won first game eight, seven Bailey Phillips was two for four. She had two RBIs um, recorded the win in the circle. She had one inning pitch, two walks, one K Mackenzie Baldwin was one for four with the two RBI double. Um, which came to be the big hit coming in the bottom of the seventh. Bulldogs scored four runs in the bottom of the seventh um, to take the lead. Macy Chastain, the leadoff, was two for four with a triple and two runs. Um, 
yeah, multiple pitchers for Tennessee Wesleyan combined for um, their 8-7 win, and it was overall it was a really good game. I always love it when you have one game that ends eight seven, and then the next one, good old one nothing ball game. Good old one nothing. Um, both pitchers had really good games, but Jill Martinette for the Eagles was two for two. Alexis Teams, Ansley Evans, Hannah Kate Singleton, and Aaron Lee. Um, they each recorded a hit of their own. They scored their lone run in the bottom of a fifth off of an error. Um, but Ali Andriano, pitcher for the Eagles, great game. Um. Just seven hits with two walks and two strikeouts apiece. Yeah, I'm looking at the, the AAC, and I said earlier in the year, Montreat's a young team to watch. And I, I still say, I think that's that that the Montreat Cavaliers are going to be a really good young team. Bree now is really good in that in that conference. Uh, they're going to be competitive. Tennessee Wesleyan shows, hey, that they, they're, they're still alive in the regular season. And what I've learned kind of over the last couple of postseasons of NAI softball, Tennessee Wesleyan is always lively. A little bit different personnel this year, but still have the talent to be able to be anybody in the conference, as we've seen, as Reinhardt is the top dog. But I'll tell you a team, Carly, who just doing my research um, over the last couple of days that came across and I got reminded of them. So the Johnson Royals this is a team I saw in Columbus. And look, I, I'll admit, when I saw them in NFC lead off, I wasn't just blown away uh, by them. They had a really fun game. Um um, oh gosh, who was that against um, Lawrence Tech? They had a really fun uh, ten eight game against Lawrence Tech. Uh, they they actually led Central Methodist for a hot second, and then CMU just kind of woke up. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, then they got one over Weber, which you know, um, and it's like all right, we'll we'll see. And then they kind of went on a, a real tough stretch. They started out like one and nine, but man, this team this won. Uh, that's now 15 and three in conference play. And you start looking at the statistics. And when you see freshmen, sophomore, 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 freshman, freshman, it's like, okay, this is interesting. This could be something uh, being built up. I'm looking at a name of Audrey Morehouse, a freshman outfielder batting 545 with 17 stolen bases. There are a couple seniors mixed in. The main one um, on the on the stat list, Caitlin Jeffers. Uh, she's got 36 stolen bags, batting 379. They have a sophomore in Ella Hampton, batting just under 400 at 397. Another sophomore in Autumn, uh, K. Wood, batting 377. Now, look, they're 15 and three in their conference. They've turned around. They're playing with confidence. They're getting good wins. They just took two this weekend from Montreat, who I, you know, a team that I, I've I've spoken very highly about. Uh, Truett McConnell, who I've spoken very highly about. Now they've got the B for their schedule coming up in the AAC. They still got Reinhardt. They still got Bree now. Um, they still have a couple more games before that they could get tripped up on. And look, I get I've been a bad jinx this year. I'm, I apologize, but we'll see. <laughs> and they they and you know they have a couple of young pitchers and uh, Lindy Weber and Madison Pritchard who are very good as well. And they got, they're a good little combination. They're a team maybe to watch out for. Uh, that's just getting hot. That's a young team that was slipping up at the beginning of the year. Uh, second year head coach get getting things going in that uh or I'm sorry uh not second year maybe third third year head head coach um there um at Johnson is that right third year second year what is what is try and remember where coach Carter when she started, it may have been this may be her third year, second or third year. Either way, young coach young in the program building. I know it's a young program. I mean, the the program yeah. started in 2020, uh, so it's not like that. Hey, it, it, it's not like I said. This program <laughs> that, that started off uh, COVID year, so uh, kind of really new um, here in 2024, putting up that kind of performance against good AAC teams. I think it's something for uh for Royals fans to be happy about. They're sitting sec second in, in in the AAC right now. And like I said, they've got tough, tough games coming up. They've got Reinhardt. Um, but and like they got Brunel. But they can beat Truett McConnell. I mean, I can't I don't see why they can't go and be competitive with everybody else in, in this conference. Um and the big thing too, Carly, like look at that. There's one of those names I just mentioned. I mean, another one in Reese Burns, who's a freshman batting 300. Another one in Megan Armstrong, who's batting just under 400 as well with eight home runs and 30 RBIs. Might want to mention her. How about Megan Armstrong? Freshman, nine doubles, eight homers, 30 juice. RBIs. Juice. Juice. 
But look, I mean, that's freshman. Caitlin Jeffers is a, a senior. And then sophomore, 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 sophomore. That's four sophomores, freshmen, 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 three freshmen. There's seven players you can build something around with two good sophomore arms. Yeah, that's a that's a solid starting point for a program. Very solid, and they're already uh, see, seeing re- reaping some um, rewards of it right now. But uh, let's let's move on. Let's go to let's talk a little whack. Um, Aquinas. They're now twenty six and six, and they had two thrilling wins. Um, I got. I actually turned on, turned in, um, watch channel, watch a little bit of both of the games. I missed the walk offs, is what it is. Uh, but game one, two to one, Grace McGuire gave up a solo shot uh, against Cornerstone in, in the first, then only gave up two more hits uh, the rest of the way. Seven strikeouts, no walks. Elizabeth Holmstrom tied it up and ha- ha- Honhorse, Elizabeth Honhorse. I was about, I'm, 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 I almost had a uh, Rihanna uh, uh, mix up there. <laughs> um, but ha- Elizabeth Honhorse tied it up in the six uh, with a line drive score in Cammie Morris. Carson Hendricks, big double in the seventh. And then a pinch hitter in Alexa Kaunchik. Count- Count- hmm. Kaunchik? I think Kaunchik. Kaunchik? Maybe. Alexa drove in the walk if- walk-off run-, run. How about that? Good job, Alexa. Yep. yep. Good job, Alexa. And then, um, obviously, a heck of a job. I mean, uh, Carly, just speaking with it, Grace McGuire, pitcher, you give up a solo shot early, and then you shut down the re- rest of the way. You got to love seeing that from your girl in the circle. Absolutely, dude. I mean, giving up a solo shot to start a game can rattle absolutely anybody. Yeah, I mean, and then lock in and just go and get uh, – I don't know how many outs, but get um, – Get eighteen, uh, get get eighteen out. So I'm giving up a run. I had to quit. I, I was thinking baseball. I almost said twenty four. I was like, wait, Fair. no baseball, Fair. no baseball brain, softball brain, softball brain. Hey, uh, game. Huh? Weber coming in at number five. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Hey. Hey, I Weber also saw their look- good. Babe. Come on, dude. I also saw their lacrosse is like what number three. Hmm. Lacrosse. Yeah. Dude. Oh, beach volleyball number seven. It's a fun time to be a Weber. dude. Fun time to be a Weber Warrior. Women's across is receiving votes. Uh, men's volleyball is I don't I don't I don't even know if there's we're, we're not ranked because I guess our schedule's weak. I guess our com- I, I don't if you, you want to know about uh, NAI men's volleyball, talk to somebody else. It's not even a Sun Conference sports. It's like look so like men's across and beach volleyball, men's beach volleyball uh, um, and men's volleyball compete in the AAC, not in the Sun Conference. So I don't know like okay. a ton about it but i do know lacrosse teams legit i just did a great great uh uh, again selfless plug whatever great interview with coach shepherd uh with manny on suncast earlier today uh that episode's out go check it out suncast coming to sun conference great great stuff and i brought up a point so carly we cover 197 teams it's a lot of teams holy crap a lot of teams. Now, of course, we don't talk about all, all equally. But, I mean, you know, this is what it is. That's the truth with anybody that covers any league ever. Yeah. But there's a couple of good social media pages for men's and women's across. No podcast. Nobody really doing video work. Nobody. I mean, some for like the school here and there, but nobody like connecting the the conferences, which I think is kind of. I think our biggest accomplishment so far, uh, something that Paul Hunt said a couple episodes ago, was like now people can hear what's going on with Aquinas versus Cornerstone. What's going on? Oh, this Johnson team. Oh, Ryan Hart versus Ten- Tennessee Wesleyan. And while you're you could be sitting in Klamath Falls, Oregon, um, or San Antonio, Texas, or Fayette, Missouri, whatever, you can be hearing about teams. And I think that's been our biggest service, our biggest kind of contribution to the NAI softball world. I think that there's just a hell of an opportunity for somebody picking up uh, and doing, doing this for lacrosse. You can cover men's lacrosse and women's lacrosse and be covering half the teams that you, uh, we do. Uh, our group does with NAISB. I think it's like 38 men's teams and like 40 something women's teams. Not oh, yeah. a lot. Oh yeah. And it, it's young. It's a young sport. It's a growing sport. It's a young sport that, I I'd be careful to say it's growing in the NAI. I I do think there's kind we may be getting a little bit of a plateau in teams, but there's still teams picking it up, um, especially down here in my neck of the 
world. The tough part is like going to be getting it to the West. That's going to be really, really hard to do with scheduling and everything. Like trying to get teams in Texas to get a team. Like you almost got to get groups of teams. So like you got somebody to play. The problem yeah. is where it, like it's just not that popular out there yet. And like where it's popular, there's just not a lot of NAI teams over in the kind of Maryland area. Like that's like the heart of lacrosse. There's just not that. Uh, there's not that many NAI teams over there. This is like what I'm getting at. Like that's just it is what it is. Um, yeah, you know, it's growing. Um, you know, I got a chance to do the the Heart of America Lacrosse Media Days. Those are super cool uh, to do. Those kind of talk about that growing and you know see it seeing it grow down here in the Sun Conference. So it's getting there. The whole point of it being, if there was somebody wanting to get into like what we do with softball, what NAI ball does with baseball, NAIF ball with football, uh, hoops report with basketball, et cetera, et cetera, and covering NAI sport. I mean, God, I mean, I can't think of a better like they are. That sport is chomping at the bit to go to to get something like this. Now I'm going to tell you, zero percent chance I'm doing it. Zero percent <laughs> chance I'm putting. I'm putting I, like like I'm hyping it up, but like I know some people are thinking, oh god, he's about to start another one. No, I'm not. I, I swear to God, I'm not. Uh, but if somebody wanted to and they wanted a thirty minute phone call or whatever, I would be more than more than happy to like try to help do whatever. To like try to like get that started. Now I'm again, I have zero interest in starting this. I have zero interest in covering NAI lacrosse outside of Sun Conference Women's Lacrosse on Suncast. But if somebody needs some help, I think it'd be a great, great way because we're all on the same team here. Yeah. We're all trying to do the same thing. We're all trying to grow the NAI that we're gonna move on. But NAI is rocking and rolling right, right now. Uh game two. Uh, between Aquinas and Cornerstone, just as interesting as game one. All seriousness, though, if anybody wants to do a cross, hit me up. I, I will I will give advice. That needs to happen. Somebody needs to be covering that that league and that sport ASAP, Rocky. Uh, Aquinas, Saints, 3-2 win. Uh, Cornerstone, boy, they almost got a big split. Uh, 2 nothing lead heading into the, the seventh. Three straight singles, back-to-back-to-back, led to a Michaela Mott pinch hit. RBI single, second one of those in a big situation for the Saints. Then with two outs, Katie Carlson knocked one up the middle to score two Saints for their 26th win of the year. Carly, I feel like Coach Brad Koch, he's been a guy that I've heard from other coaches very uh, as respected. And I tell you what, seeing this and just re- reading about these games, it sure seems like Coach Brad pulled all the right strings. I think so. I mean, I it's just – I don't know. Softball's. Yeah, I don't know what the heck I would have done. I don't know what I would ever do if I was a coach. But I mean, that'd be an experience. That. <laughs> oh, I'd like to think I'd be an okay coach, but I, I think so. I think so. I think the filter needs a little cleaned up, and I maybe can't really how to get what I'm thinking out. But I can't release many details yet. But Coach Harrell is definitely in the works. I'll say that. Okay. Coach okay. Harrell is in the works. Um, we'll say that. Waiting for more details. Want to get pitching coach? Name. God no, not softball. <laughs> not softball. No. <laughs> no, not softball. Uh, we would get cooked. We would get absolutely cooked. Ah, uh, I don't know, mate. I feel like I, I would get good philosophy. I feel like I get people motivated. Uh, I feel like I get the girls get motivated. Get the people play. going. I would get the people going. I could get the people going. I, I, I'm a hype guy. I'm a hype guy. I'm. A, you, you should. You should see me in some pre games. I. I can't really replicate what I was saying in some pre games because uh, keep things PG, best we can. But you know, I'd fire the boys up. Would you get them rocking? Would you get the girls fired up? Were you? Were you what? What what were you doing to fire up the team? Or were you just kind of a <laughs> vibe? Were you vibe? Um, there was some things that I also should not say to keep it PG. Um, usually if there was my go-to was a little bit of humor. Kinda kinda try and keep the situation light and pull a joke somewhere from deep. I love anybody. I 
I can't really see anybody on Midland's team like trying to be serious, like and give like a serious talk I was, outside of like Coach Beth or something like before a game. I just could not see like I couldn't see Ronnie F Foot trying to give like this game right here. This one, like, you get what I'm saying? Like, I don't <laughs> yeah. think I can see Ronnie Foot get just get out there try, and just getting all serious and everything be like seven innings. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. I couldn't see that. No, nah, no, nah. the seniors before us were more about that. Um, but like my group and the groups after are all just kind of even keel, chilling. Team that likes to have fun. I like to have fun. We like that. Yep. We like that. All right. Uh, I tell you what, fun game. I uh, got to put my eyes on a little bit. Carly, talk to us uh, about Trinity Christian and St. Francis. Uh, that first game. Holy crap. But I'll let you go through it. But And, and then the, go ahead. G game one, five, four. Yeah. yeah. Um, Trinity Christian, the Trolls. Love fire it. fire mascot um they win game one in eight innings five to four they had a lead three one headed into the six um but saint francis back-to-back -back home runs jalen taylor and isabel landeros they tie it up um go ahead into extras miley hammond gets the go-ahead single and julia sanfriglia follows up with another single um she was julia was two for three on the day miley hammond Three for five, two RBIs, a home run, six inning pitch with only three earned runs. Doing it both ways. Dude, Walk uh, off, win in the circle. Dude, and the eighth inning of this this game. Uh, wait, was it a walk off or was it just? Uh, no, it was go ahead. But go ahead, go ahead. I was about to say it's in the bottom of the eighth. Annalisa Fluter, did you see the uh, walk off? They tag they tagged us in on. on it's kind of tough to see this on the live stream. It's like in center field but robbed a home run in the bottom. I of the did eight. see that. Yeah. It, yeah. it was, a, it was a little uh, grainy, but yeah, I got the gist. You got the gist. She was yeah. there, ha had somebody there, made a play. Yeah. Um, fun one. And I, I Trinity Christian, we'll talk more. I, I want to save all Chicago land. Cause I, that, we need another weekend of Chicago the land. Play for, for, that's awesome. Right. Yeah. Oh, I saw that. And I was like, I have to include that. Yeah. They're uh, I tell you what, they're they're a fun team. They're seventeen and seventeen. Um, they're the, with a first year coach, um, Ellie Vanderfield. First year, first year, first like first head coach. In first base. ever. Like she ain't that much older than us. Okay. Hi, Bunker. Bunker's <laughs> back. Sup, dude. Hi, dude. Dude was chilling on like you know the little door stopper that like makes the noise. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he was just chewing on that. That's why I was. He's doing a good out. job of not like getting the sound in. I haven't heard him at all. That's surprising because he's everywhere chewing on everything. He was so good last episode on Sunday when I had him. He just slept underneath the desk, but I don't know. Something's gotten into him. He's getting he's getting less camera shy. Yeah, I think he's getting sick of me. <laughs> he's like, get get off, mom. It's, we're time to go. All right. <laughs> uh, oh, hey, we gotta go. We got ten minutes, uh, and then we got we got we gotta hop on uh, with, with right. Coach Ken. All right. All right. Uh, talk talk about game two, then we'll go through, and then we, uh, we got to hop on with Coach. Yeah, game two, St. Francis takes it 6-2. to two. They score six unanswered runs throughout the whole game. Um, the Trolls will get two in the seventh, but that's pretty much all she wrote. Kaylee Sipple, two for four, two RBIs. Kylie Cook, two for three, two RBIs. Um, and an RBI piece for Isabella Landeros and Emily Boyle. Emily Boyle also goes the distance in the circle. She goes six and two-thirds allowing just four hits with seven strikeouts. Very nice. Uh, very, boom. uh, boom, very exciting, uh, uh, stuff up in the Chicago land athletic conference. Going to talk more or collegiate conference, collegiate athletics, Chicago, collegiate athletic conference. I think, uh, Chicago land, whatever, uh, exciting one. Yeah. We're going to talk more, uh, next episode. Uh, we will go into kind of the scenarios who can win the conference. We're going to look mostly who's going to win it. Um, we will look a little bit more at some, Dropping stuff, throwing things around, and um, some other stuff. Maybe we'll definitely look at the top of um, all the NAI softball conferences, um, especially the ones that are looking hectic uh, as we get through this weekend. Then have two more weekends remaining before conference tournament time. Good lord, the season's flying by. It's making me sad. Um, <laughs> but um, okay, we were going to go into a few, a few of these games. Like I said, we got we 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 got nine minutes. We're on a crunch. Yeah, we gotta go. All right. Uh, some games to watch this weekend really quick. Friday, Mid-American Naz takes on Mount Mercy. That's going to be a really exciting, really good pitching in 
that game and that dou double header starts off four o'clock central time. I believe that's first pitch for game one. That might be for game two. Pretty sure it's from game one, but check it out on either Mount Mercy's or Mid American Naz's website. Uh, Saturday, uh, which actually started out on the West Coast, uh, according to the NAI softball scoreboard with Jessup and Arizona Christian at 10 a.m. central time. Bunch of noon games. IU Southeast uh, play St. Mary. Uh, of the woods that would be a, be a fun one in the river states big one in the um mid-south with cumberlands and freed hardman freed hardman coming off winning three or four against campbellsville count cumberlands patriots need no introduction uh faulkner middle georgia state that's going to be a fun one faulkner needs to keep keep winning games staying hot middle georgia state uh they're looking to solidify uh having one of the top spots in the the southern states uh big one out west uh, also uh at noon uh, yeah all these are noon, noon social time starts except for yep nope this one too according to the, to the website um number 22 vanguard number 12 hope international obviously a big one out there looking to bounce back after they both got swept against jessup last weekend uh then a huge one in the cpac west cliff embry riddle one o'clock central time uh start for that one and then we just talked about the aquinas saints they have their biggest test in the whack and that's obviously against Mason Mason Schloud and company uh, with the Madonna Crusaders, 12 o'clock Central, a little Sunday action. Something to throw on while we're watching Tiger win a Masters. Yeah, you got softball in the, in the Masters. Love it. All right. I uh, hope you all enjoyed this. We're going to kick it over now to uh, 600 win head coach, built up a heck of a career uh, at Ottawa, uh, a brave legend. Got a feeling he'll be heading to. Uh, the Ottawa Braves Hall of Fame uh, here at very soon. So without further ado, here is Coach Jay Kent. Okay, we welcome on a very special guest. It is Coach Jay Kent of the Ottawa Braves softball team. Year 23 uh, for Ottawa softball. Coach, first off, congratulations. Recently picked up career win number 600. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that accomplishment, uh, what, what it means to you and Brave softball. Well, first of all, thank you. Um, and thanks for having me on here. But, uh, you know, honestly, I'm not sure it's set in yet that um, that it's actually number 600. You know, we're, we're in the middle of conference, and I think that's really what's um, on our minds and what's on my mind. Uh, but I think what it tells me is, one, I've been doing this for quite a while. Um, and two, that I've had really, really uh, good players and, and great assistant coaches. Um, you, you can't do this alone, obviously, as a head coach. Um, you know, and I'm just fortunate that, that, you know, the administration's been there and supported me, but, uh, you know, just, once again, it, it, it's all about the players and the assistant coaches that, that have come through our program and, and they deserve all the credit. Yeah. Kind of like you said, kind of right in the middle of KCAC play. It's like, all right, cool. We got to lock <laughs> back in. We got, we got, we got yep. a manager. We got Avila coming up. So, yeah. And that's why I told me, you know, after we, we, you know, they, they kind of surprised me with some shirts and stuff like that. I said, you know what? I'm more worried about 601 than I am about 600. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. Um, but coach, speaking of winning, y'all started KCAC three and two, um, 20 and 10 overall. Since then, Braves have won nine of their last 10. You now said at 29 and 11, you got 10 conference games remaining. What do you contribute this success to? Um, and how important is it to you to be playing your best softball at this point in the season? Well, I, I kind of told people early, you know, I, I thought we'd struggle a little bit early. Uh, I really did. If you really look at our, our starters and the people that are playing significant innings for us, uh, the majority of them are actually new to our program or new to starting for us. So, you know, besides, um, you know, actually Mercer, who was here last year, uh, Sierra Fabian um, and, and a few others, this team is really pretty new. Um you know, we have three sophomores starting, but most of them didn't see very much varsity time last year. Our shortstop, our first baseman, center fielder, um, and we have two true freshmen that are playing some time. So it was going to take us some time to gel. And I, I think it took our time, you know, it took time, but we are starting to play our best softball. And I told the players, you know, this is the this is the right time to be playing your best softball. And and I really think it's just part of the learning how to play together. Uh, learning how, you know, getting everybody onto the same page. Um, I always knew we were talented. Uh, that wasn't the the question. It was just getting everybody to kind of click and, and play together. Um, and, and we finally started doing that about, well, like I said, about 10 games ago. And, and we've really been playing our best softball since. 
Yeah. I mean, talking about the talented team that you have and them gelling together, your pitching staff this year, um, especially as of lately, has been phenomenal. Talk to us about what makes your staff so difficult to prepare for. Well, I mean, first, our, our number one, Ashley Mercer, um, she's just a competitor. Uh, you know, I think she's one of those that you don't realize how good she is until you look at the box score at the end of the game and uh, what she's done. You know, she doesn't throw 65 and blow you away. She doesn't do anything crazy. To, you know, I think she averages three or four strikeouts a game. But it, she just doesn't let you square anything up. Um, you know, everything's off the end of the bat or in on the hands. And and uh, she's been phenomenal. She just competes. Um, and I think that's what kind of sets her apart from from everybody else on our staff. Um, you know, then we have um, really two other starters that have thrown really well. We have a senior. Uh, to Kia Hill, who's, you know, if you take out about two innings, uh, her ER rate looks a lot better. Um, yeah. And, you know, the the five innings or the five runs versus friends and, and two thirds of an inning, that'll kind of kill an ERA. Um, but she's throwing the ball really well. Uh, I mean, she's had some big time wins for us. Anytime that we have lost game one, she's stepped in when she's pitched game two and, and uh, got us a W. And then our, our freshman from down there in Florida, uh, Madison Carney, has pitched great in her time uh, on the mound. And then it's also nice to have a fifth year senior as a reliever. And she's a true reliever. I mean, she's come in and closed the door five times for us. Um, and so we have a little bit of everything and having an actual reliever uh, is something not every program has. And, and we are very fortunate to have that with, with Lorelai. And um, it's one of those that we, we have the depth that if somebody does kind of get in trouble, do we have somebody there to um, to go in and, and shut the door and give us a chance to to come back and win? Yeah, you hear in you know talking baseball players, baseball pitchers, especially relief pitchers, you got to have a totally different mindset. You got to kind of be a pitcher in general has got to be you know a little <laughs> little crazy, but a relief pitcher especially is it kind of the same as like you said. There's there's only a handful of, of like true uh, relief pitchers. No, like Montreat has one um i know there's one more i missed off the top of my head but but like it, it just kind of what's different uh would you would you say between a relief pitcher and a starting pitcher and in, in, in softball well i think you know the first thing that whether you're taught baseball or softball a starter has to kind of pace themselves you know mm -hmm. they gotta get through five six seven innings um and so you know they gotta be a little smarter they understand they they're going to see batters for a second and third time where a reliever is just going to see them once. Um, and, and so I, they've also seen, you know, started to throw something different. So bringing the reliever, uh, you know, definitely throws a, um, the hitters off mm -hmm. and, uh, and Lorelai, like I said, she's a true reliever. I don't think she started the game for us in about two over two years now. Mm -hmm. uh, but she's thrown some major innings and, and been a huge part of our success. Um, you know, and I'm always not the nicest coach in the world. I, I don't always bring her in to start in it. And sometimes it's, hey, uh, there's bases loaded. And I need you to go in and shut the door. And she's done that. Uh, but I think for her, if you ever watch her pitch, there's not real, there's not much emotion, high or low. Uh, she kind of stays even keel. And I think that's what allows her to be su successful. That when she does get in those tough situations, she's not panicking. Um her her blood pressure is not rising. She's she's pretty calm and and uh, puts the pressure back on the hitters because you know those situations the hitters get excited yeah. and anxious, and I think she uses that to her advantage. Yeah, relief pitchers they they, they are their their own breed. I, I live <laughs> with one. Uh, my my roommate's a, a great great uh, relief pitcher. Shout out my boy Seth. Got about twenty something innings sub two era down here in the sun conference doing yeah. his thing but um yeah they, they're their own breed they're, they they need to have the, their own little little section in in <laughs> in, in both baseball and, and softball um, absolutely coach uh your group obviously wants to get back to the kcac tournament uh get revenge um last year no came up just short in, in the tournament what's been the message this year to ensure the end season success so you can repeat last year's success the end season while also kind of keeping that fire in their belly and priming them up for this run uh to get through it be on top of the kcac and then obviously when it comes to to the tourney go there and and, and w win the kcac tournament well honestly we haven't even talked about the tournament yet um we, we are playing this one you know the old cl coaches cliche is one game at a time and you know, we're, we're in a dogfight for, you know, a conference title. We got some big time games coming up. 
Um, you know, we start looking ahead to the conference tournament. We're going to trip up, you know, probably multiple times with who we've got left on our schedule. And so honestly, we, have, we haven't talked about the tournament yet. We'll, we'll talk about that um, like April 27th, the day after our last regular season game. Uh, you know, we, we kind of look at the season, uh, you know, like most people in three different segments. You have the, the non-conference schedule um, that, you know, you hope prepares you for your conference. And then the conference season, um, and we do talk about the conference season in our uh, preseason, our non-conference, because you know, we talk about how we got to get prepared and get everything kind of where we need it for when we jump into conference. But yeah. honestly, we haven't talked about the conference tournament yet. Um, you know, we really will deal with that, um, like I said, after the last game, and then we'll start putting a plan together, see if we can go, uh, you know, win that one. But that that really has not, has not been um, – any of our, in our thoughts, anything like that. Um, obviously when we get out to great Bend, it'll be, you know, full speed ahead, but you know, we, we got too many big important games coming up to, to try to look ahead in, in two or three weeks. Absolutely. Well, well, looking forward to here the end of April, talk to you about, uh, <laughs> about the tournament, but let's, let's talk about a little bit about uh, the KCAC been a phenomenal conference for us to cover. And like you said, some big ones uh, coming up down the stretch. It's going to be so like our next episode. We're going to kind of look at what all the conference uh, races are shaping up to be. And KCAC is definitely going to be one that's highlighted as insane right now. <laughs> uh, so just talk to us about the conference this year. Uh, what are your thoughts on newcomer of evangels uh, d- done well, uh, has, has had some strong performances some of the other teams um in the conference that you played and then some of the games big games that you have coming up so first of all i mean you know you bring up evangel i knew when they came into the conference they were going to be good um you know i knew they were top three top four for sure um coach halbrook does a a phenomenal job there i've known him for quite a while and, and played against you know evangel for the last four or five years and uh well coached so not shocked at all that they are doing what they are doing in the conference um you know, the rest of the conference, uh, you know, if you looked five, 10 years ago uh, and then compared the conference now to then, it's night and day different. I mean, there are, when we get to the conference tournament, there's going to be eight teams out there and all eight could probably realistically win the conference tournament. And, and five, seven years ago, it, you're probably looking at three or four. Um, so the depth has really been added, uh, especially since we've added Avila, Oklahoma Westland, now Evangel, um, our, our conference just continues to get better. And, and uh, th- there's some teams that are probably sitting that three, four, five, six spot right now that, you know, probably wish they had one or two games back to be a little bit closer to the top. But uh, I mean, it is a really good conference. I mean, if we, every day is going to be a dog fight. And I, th- I think that's what makes it fun though. Um, when there are no easy games and, and um uh, then when you do win something at the end, it, it just means more known that it was a tough battle uh, all year. But our conference is just, like I said, it's just gotten better and better every year. I look back at the last four or five years and uh, everybody that's made the national playoffs and it's not been the same two teams every time. And I think that's, what's kind of been cool too, is every one of those teams has won a game in the national playoffs. Um, you know, in 2021, you know, you had, you know, Bethany made a great run to the final four and we were at the world series that year. Um, you know, last year, both uh, Avila and, and us won a, a, a playoff game. The year before that, um, us and, and I can't remember who, I think it was friends, you know, they won a playoff game. Uh, so, you know, it, we're not just a one or two team um, conference. It's been four or five different teams that have made the postseason and won. Uh, and I think that tells you to the strength of our conference. Um, you know, we may not have the, you know, the Oklahoma City, the Our Lady of the Lake uh, in it. Uh, you know, and a lot of the other programs that are, you know, top five perennial, but, you know, one through five, one through eight are teams that can legitimately win yeah. a national playoff game. And I don't think every conference can say that. No, I mean, you, you say that and kind of immediately top of my head. I'm like, huh, how many are there? And it, 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 it's, it, it's definitely a short list. I could send multiple teams opening round and put the success that the conference has had. And I mean, love, it. I mean, if uh, great. And like you said, I mean, you've gotten to see the conference grow, which I'm sure has been uh, a, a lot of fun. Kind of like Carly. I mean, she's kind of been a part of growing uh, a great rivalry in uh, NAI part of the, or in the NAI over there in the G pack, uh, which mm-hmm. that one's going to collision course with Midland and <laughs> Northwestern. Yep. So, I mean, that's going to be a great battle. I mean, those are two great teams and, and uh, I'll, I'll be excited to see how that one ends up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You and me both. <laughs> <laughs> um, but 
kind of touching more on you. You've had a phenomenal 23 year career at Ottawa. Um, this being your final year, you know, what, talk to me about what kind of legacy that you hope to leave at Ottawa and kind of what the university has meant to you. Well, uh, you know, this is actually my alma mater. So this is year 29 on this campus total, wow. uh, between, uh, a student and employment, uh, being employed, uh, you know, so I, I believe black and gold. I mean, this is, you know, a little bit of who I am, uh, you know, well over half my life I, I've been associated with, with Ottawa and, and, uh, you know, I wouldn't trade any up for anything, you know? Um, so it's been great and I appreciate everything that, um, uh, you know, we've, they've done for me and, and hopefully they can say that I've done for them. But, uh, first of all, you know, thanks. Uh, you know, been, I think the biggest thing that, that I want to leave is, you know, that I've done it the right way. Um, and, you know, try to leave it in a better place than I found it. Um, you know, but I think, you know, if you just try to do the right things and, and don't try to take shortcuts, um, you know, it, it takes a while to build. I mean, you, you may not know the full history, but uh, I think my first four years, we won a total of about 30 games and um, we lost over a hundred. So, you know, I, but I also think that, you know, being a 24 year old guy, you know, I thought everything I was going to touch was going to turn to gold and, and I got humbled really quickly. Um, but I also think that uh, kind of forced me to buckle down and understand there, there's no shortcuts to being successful in life. And, let, you know, and you take that to, to coaching that if you're going to try to be successful, you got to put the time and effort in, you know, uh, you just can't, you know, kind of do it half speed and think you're going to get, you know, big time results. So, you know, just try to do things the right way. Um, that, that's been the biggest thing, um, you know, try to try to impact players lives. Um, you know, I always tell them if you can play four years for me, you're going to be pretty mentally tough when you get out of here and uh, you're going to be prepared for life. Uh, Cause I know I'm not the easiest guy to play four times, um, but I really am. I, I'm trying to set them up for, you know, obviously success on the softball field, whether here, but more importantly, it's them being successful, you know, 10, 20, 30 years down the road. That, that that's going to be more to me than any, conference title or anything like that so it really is about developing those relationships and and um you know hopefully they can look back and say you know what i didn't understand it when the coach was saying it you know 5 10 15 years ago but it really makes sense now and and i really did learn something kind of remind me of what my parents would say when i was younger hey i get you don't get this but trust me you will and there i've uh, you're kind of getting to uh the big boy world if you will graduating college and a couple of things are clicking i'm like remember that when I was 12 and that made no sense at all. But um, coach, uh, you, you just gave some phenomenal, phenomenal ad advice there. And I hope there's uh, coaches in the younger parts of their uh, career that that are learning and and kind of something that, that, that you said, I mean, your first four years was like 30 something to a hundred and something. So it's <laughs> not going to be, it, Rome was not built in a day. Like it's going to take time. You know, if there's a young coach watching uh, on the YouTube or listening uh, on the audio side of the podcast to this interview, what advice would you like to pass along to them? Well, I think the biggest one, and so I used to teach a class, a coaching course here on campus, uh, and we talked about philosophies and, and you know, those kind of things. And I think the biggest thing I would ever tell a young coach is stay true to who you are. Um, you know, right now in the world of softball, everybody wants to be Patty Gasso. Well, guess what? There's only one Patty Gasso. Uh, I'm not saying you shouldn't try to take something from her and learn from her and, and those kind of things, but, you know, as soon as you try to be her, you're, you're going to lose who you really are. Um, and I think when players see that you're not true to your own self, you kind of lose that trust with, with them. Uh, so I think that's the very first thing I would tell any young coach is just be true to who you are, stay true to who you are. Now you may have to, to change a few things, um, you know, as, as the years go on, cause society changes and those kind of things. I think every coach would tell you that. Yeah. But as soon as you try to be somebody else, um, your players are going to see through it and you're going to lose your program. You're going to lose that culture. I think that's really the uh, the first thing. Uh, and then one of the other things that I think young coaches right now are, are struggling with is they don't ask questions. Um, you know, I remember my first few years, you know, when we struggled and then, you know, we started building success. Anybody that I could ask a question to, I was asking questions, you know, and it wasn't. You know, I remember uh, our, our women's soccer coach here was a phenomenal coach and a great guy. And, you know, we used to have a ton of, you know, water cooler talks. And obviously I wasn't asking him how to swing a bat or, or you know, what pitch to throw here and there. 
But I was asking him about how he was setting his culture and, uh, you know, what he looked for in, in potential student athletes. Um, and so getting different people's perspectives on how to do things, I, I think is a lost art these days. You know, everybody has it, their own way of doing things and they think their way is the only way. Well, let me, that's one of the biggest, it, it's not, there, there's so many different ways and you may hear something that you're like, oh man, that really makes sense. That can work for me. And then there's going to be things you're like, you know, that works for them and they're really successful, but that's not going to work in our program. Uh, but you, you got to be willing to ask questions. Um, you know, and I was fortunate. I had some great mentors here um, that allowed me to ask questions and and those kind of things. So um, I, I really do. I, I think that's a, a thing that, you know, whether you're in a new job or, or coaching, don't be afraid to ask questions. And then probably the last thing is don't get frustrated when you don't have success early. Um, you know, we all want instant gratification. Um, and you may be lucky enough to get that even in your first year. But at some point, you're going to have a season that is not perfect in, in the way you want it to go. Uh, and you can't get frustrated. You just got to reevaluate. And um, but, I, but you know, I see a lot of young coaches that they get frustrated and they let that control the rest of their, their season, the, their next couple of years. Um, you got to learn how to take things in stride. Um, th this profession will humble you very, very quickly. As soon as you think you got something mastered, it will sit you right down and, and uh, laugh at you. So you, you can't get frustrated. You got to learn from all the, the little things that go wrong. You got to learn from the things that go right. Um, but you got to keep a right mindset. You mentioned you have some great mentors and uh, uh, that and uh, that, that impacted you and like like you said you, you're going to have to develop but always stay true to what you are but like you said you got to change you got to adapt because i mean nobody's <laughs> perfect in in, in yep. any industry especially uh coaching so what was something maybe you learned early on uh that kind of changed how you coach uh that that, that you, that's held true to now you know I, I i go back to i think my second or third year here and uh so back when I first started, I was actually the assistant men's basketball coach at Ottawa as I was the head softball coach. So there were days in, in like February that I was going from, you know, coaching softball right over to coaching, you know, uh, a practice for men's basketball. And I think one of the biggest mistakes I, I made early in my career was I tried to coach the men like men and the women like, you know, women. And uh, it wasn't until one of the players said, hey, coach, just coaches like an athlete. And uh, that really hit me. Like, cause I, I was trying, I was trying to coach them differently because I thought that's how they wanted to be coached. And finally the coaches coaches like an athlete, you know, treat us as, as you would any athlete that you've ever coached. And uh, from then, I, I think that I actually jump started my, my, my coaching career. And, and that's about the time we started to change the culture, uh, change our winning ways was, Hey, well, we're on the softball field coach. We're just athletes, you know. Obviously, there's we still got to treat them a little differently, but uh, you know, hey, we're athletes, coach. Don't treat us any differently because you know, this and that. Uh, and I think that's really what helped, and that's what I try to do, uh, you know, in the coaching world. Obviously, I'm you know trying to get them known personally and those kind of things, but I don't know why that that hit me so hard. Uh, but that was one of the things that our players brought to me um, that really changed how I looked at at coaching. Um, and like I said, I think that really kind of took us on the right path forward. Coach, I got, I got a really, uh, not serious, but <laughs> kind of a fun one coach. You, you've been in this for so long now. What, what are your plans for after softball? So I have already, um, well, let me just tell you why I'm getting out of it. And it has nothing okay. to do with the game. It has nothing to do with the players. Um, I've, I've got three uh, kids. My, my oldest daughter is in eighth grade, so she'll be a freshman in high school next year. I have a sixth grade son who will be in seventh grade and, and uh, be able to play middle school sports. Um, then I've got a, a, another son that's seven that will uh, be in second grade. And I'm just ready to be a dad and, and a husband. And you know, I, I've missed so much of their stuff. And um, so I, that that's the reason I'm getting out. Um, but uh, to... to answer your question i'm actually already started the transition over to be an administration um for the campus um i'm the director nice. of administrative operations so i'm going from coaching softball to looking at budgets and, and uh dollars and cents every day 
Uh, but it, 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 I, I love it. Um, I've enjoyed my my first few months on the job, um, and it, uh, and you know I couldn't have done this without two great assistant coaches um, that have allowed me to do this and, and really taken on a larger role in the coaching, um, you know, or the day to day stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but this new job's going to allow me to you know when I need to go watch my kids play uh, games or, or something like that. Um, it just gives me a little more freedom. So. Um, and I'm very fortunate that uh, our administration at, at Ottawa has um, allowed me to to do this. That's awesome. You got some uh, poss possibly some future Braves uh, co coming up the pipeline. <laughs> Maybe. What what sports? What sports uh, are, are they in right now? Um, my daughter plays a little bit of everything. Like she played uh, volleyball and, and basketball in the middle school. My son is a football fanatic. Um, he's excited. To, uh, I'm, I'm that mean dad that hasn't allowed him to play tackle football until he gets to middle school. <laughs> so he's excited to play that next year. And then my seven-year-old, it's whatever the season is, um, he wants to go out and play. And sometimes it could be two or three different sports in a day. So uh, mm -hmm. we try to, keep, you know, we're, we're not pushing them one way or the other, whatever they want to do. And if they don't want to do it, I'm not going to make them do it. Right. Well, I'm sure on the, if you, if you got softball players, there's plenty of plenty, plenty of, you, 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 plenty of connections uh, you can get for some hit, hitting lessons. Yeah. What, uh, someone wants to learn how to kick a football. Hey, free of charge, free of charge right here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how's Ottawa football? Ottawa football's uh, been pretty solid over the years, right? I don't, I don't know too they much. Have been. Uh, they had a few uh, down years last uh, few, but they actually got back and, and coach Davis is doing a phenomenal, phenomenal job. And, uh, so the KCAC now we, we're up to 14 teams. So they actually split football into two divisions and they wow. won. And so they won their division and got to go to the national playoffs this year. So they, they've got to go in the right direction and, and excited to see what the future is going to hold for them. Cause they're, he's doing it right. And, and like, he, he didn't take shortcuts. He's, he's doing it the right way. And I think that'll allow him to have success. Love it. Love it. I, that's man. I, that, I'll always look I'm a softball dude. I'm officially a softball dude. Now that I'm done playing football. That's the ultimate team sport. Lo love hearing that. Love hearing that uh, for, for that program. But looking back at the world of NAI softball coach, how much has NAI softball or not, maybe not how much, but how has NAI softball changed since you started out as a skipper for the Braves over the last 23 years? I'm, t you know, and uh, Carly would, wouldn't under, even understand this back when I started the game you see today and how many people are playing it and, and uh, those kind of things, it's night and day. Um, I look back, you know, when I first started, every college program had 12 to 14 players, um, you know, and now you're seeing people with, you know, 35 to 50 kids in the programs. Uh, when I took over, Kansas City had one or two tournaments a summer. Um, now, if you go to Kansas City during the summer, there's two or three tournaments every weekend up there with some big teams. Um, some great competition. Uh, so it, it's just one of those, it, it's a sport that has absolutely grown. And if you're not, if you haven't been in the, in it for at least 10 or 15 years, you, I can't explain the difference because uh, you wouldn't believe it. It is, um, I mean, what, what, you know, the college world series has, has done down in Oklahoma city. I mean, if you look back at, at videos from the early 2000s, I mean, to now, I mean, Oklahoma City has had to increase the the size of Hall of Fame Stadium just to keep the World Series there. Otherwise, they were threatening to move it. And uh, twenty years ago, that was not that wasn't even a conversation. Had to add on to that stadium. The stadium was too small, or, you know, too big. And now it's we could say it's too small. Um, but the the game has just grown, and you know, Reagan, I, I think what you're doing is actually grown, especially the NAI like crazy i mean people are talking about your podcast and and this type of, of media and, and it's grown i'm sure carly would tell you the same thing that um just what you two are doing is yeah. growing it in the in the eye level uh big time and uh, we can't thank you guys enough for that but it, i look back and i'm like man softball has changed in 23 years i mean yeah. if you had three or four good players back then you were probably a pretty good team if you only had three good players now you're probably getting run ruled about every game mm -hmm. um and so the, the talent has, you know, jumped and just the number of, of talented players is all over the place. I mean, there's, I, I can't even really put into words how much this, this sport has changed in my 23 years. Yeah. I think uh, there's a, been a pretty good bit of luck involved just as far as, you know, getting in uh, with 
2022 World Series, my first experience with the NAI softball. You know, told, told that story a ton. I'm tell it again. Uh, but I mean, for Ottawa people listen, li- listening, yeah, kind of that's where the idea for NAISB was started. Um, when I was there covering Southeastern and Weber, uh, in Columbus, and then it's grown into this from last year to this year. And we're seeing, and Carly and I hit on this a good bit last episode, what we're seeing now with women's sports. Um, and we, we talked about Dawn Staley at South Carolina, Caitlin Clark, obviously mm-hmm. at Iowa, uh, you look at what now Oklahoma, Oklahoma softball, um, <laughs> before that you had, there was, there was Michigan softball, Arizona softball that was getting it on the higher level at the higher NCAA level. Um, and I think just we're at a good time to have started doing this and it's not, it's not we're wanting to grow the game uh but we we said earlier in the episode probably the biggest thing we've done is just being able to connect you being a, like you obviously can't watch what's going on in the cascade you can't see what's going on in the sun conference like on, on a day-to-day basis week to week basis i think that's kind of been our just our thing and you know anything else extra outside of that where we're helping other eyes get to any ice softball is just gravy on top and we've had we got a great team. I mean, gr- we got great people doing graphics. Uh, Kayla Mick on, on, doing stuff on uh, TikTok. Uh, Madison, Connor, Braden with the videography. And I know Carly and I, we may get uh, a good chunk of the recognition for getting on here and doing the podcast. But man, it, it, great, great people. And the ultimate reason I think we've been successful are you, know, you, you, the coaches, uh, the players uh, appreciating this and accepting, accepting like a, or understanding what we're trying to do grow the game, grow any ice softball. It's been so much fun. Like I, I love doing this. I'm going to be around this world for a long time. No, Carly's going, uh, going to be around. Um, I, I'm sad that, that you're, you're not going to be, uh, uh with, with the softball team after this year, but no, you'll be there in Ottawa and coach can't, uh, I, Carly, uh, oh, we, we do have one more question. Of course we got one more question. We got it. We, we've got to ask coach. Oh. Kent, correct. Got to ask it. Yeah. Right. Go ahead. Fire away. Carly, <laughs> you got th- th- This is your question to ask. It is. It is. Um, so you're on a road trip, right? You're, you're stopping at a gas station. What drink, what snack are you grabbing? Well, if, if you know me at all, you know, I'm drinking a Mountain Dew. Oh, that okay. Is, Just the regular is, or you get like, oh, absolutely nothing but the regular. Uh, okay. I normally have one to two Mountain Dews every game day uh, nice. during game. So there's always one in the dugout. There's probably three or four always sitting in the cooler in our dugout. So, um, that that is hands down the, the drink um and then for uh the food if i'm just going a little snack you know it's probably um uh, probably some good gummy worms okay sour okay. traditional sour? Yeah. Traditional. Traditional, traditional traditional gummy worms that's okay. uh that's sugary that's sugary i just i i gotta get a root canal back here i got a cavity <laughs> i gotta get a root canal so i got i'm, I'm on that like i watch your sugar intake for the for the teeth but hey man i like it that I've, that that's a that's a good honest answer that's not a oh i may get you know a water i may get no, that, oh, no, no. i'm getting sugary <laughs> I, i'm a mountain dew guy i drink that stuff like it's like it's water so <laughs> oh i love it. hey well coach can't uh thank you so much uh f- for joining us tonight uh busy re- rest of y'all's schedule kcac uh again next episode we're going to take a deep dive ladies and gentlemen talk about all these uh conference races that were coming down two weekends left after this weekend we got two weekends two weeks left to figure out what the seating's going to be uh before we get into conference tournament season's flying by uh but again coach coach can't uh anything else coach no, I just really appreciate you guys having me on. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, of course. Uh appreciate love to have you. Yep, love to have you on. Carly, good? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you, coach. Thank yep. you. Y'all have a great uh weekend. We'll catch you Monday. All right. Thank, thank you. you.